it's frustrating. It's frustrating and it hurts me. It hurts me because my mom's not here. And so much, I have so many questions and I wish I could give y'all answers. Whenever they told me what happened, I couldn't believe it. I was mad. I was mad that my grandma got taken from me, <laughs> that we found out the way we did, because no, no family should go through that. So first I want to ask both of you, and, and I'll say, how are you related to Elena? I am her daughter. I'm her granddaughter. Okay. So first starting off, just tell me who, tell me who she was. My mom. She was a hard worker. Uh, she never liked to sit down, um, if I'm being honest. She was always on the go, uh, always willing to help out whenever and wherever she can. Uh, she was a wonderful mother, a wonderful grandmother. Uh, she loved being involved in sports uh, with the grandkids. She loved the taking my niece. <laughs> uh, they would go to the casinos. Um, she just dedicated her life to us. Uh, I honestly, I've I've never seen such a hard worker as much as I've seen her. Um, she is kind. She had a big heart. Tell me about because I see a lot of family members here. So tell me about um, how important family is to her. Because obviously, I can see that family is really important. Family is her number one priority. Um, she loved everyone individually. She loved them to the fullest. She, I, honestly, I, I, she would bend over backwards for the kids. Uh, what she would spoil the kids, if I could, if I would say that, the grandkids. Um, they loved spending time with their grandma as much as they could, and same with her. She loved spending time with them as well. Um, we have a big family. Um, <laughs> it's a lot to to cater to, but she she managed to make it work. Tell me a little bit about memories um, and any special memory that sticks out to you um, with your grandmother, with your mother. I'll let you go. Mm -hmm. I think um, Take your time, I understand, I understand. Are there any special memories that you want to share? Um, I have many. Um, biggest ones were vacation trips when I was little. We would go to the caves, we'd go Sea World, Disney World. I remember that, that time she made me save all my pennies and put them in a jar because that's how we were going to make it to Disney World and we made it. Um, softball. I she was, I never once not saw her go to my games. She was always there on the sideline cheering. My number one fan. I think those were my biggest memories. Just, just her being there with me at every little step I had. She would just be supportive. We would talk about practice after I got home. And then I would tell her, like, Grandma, I'm gonna get home run. And she'd be like, we'll just hit the bat, just swing the bat harder. <laughs> <laughs> or whenever I would tell her, like, so I'm a freshman, so we don't get to, you're just still filling out, like, the team and stuff. She would be like, you have to work harder than the other person. You have to want it more than the other person. You just have to be there, be present, and work hard. And I've seen her work hard herself, showing up to work every day, working probably more than grandmothers should work, but she loved working. And she was just there always. And both of you mentioned um, how she instilled hard work in you and you, and you witnessed her um, work hard every single day. Um, what do you know about her working um, at Walmart and her experience there and what she did? Well, she's been there for 10 years. Uh, recently at this new one, uh, she transferred there in December. She was training uh, forklifts. Uh, she's operated her, as long as I can remember when I was little. Uh, clean. She was always by the books, no accidents, and that's the reason why she made sure 
if someone wasn't following the rules, she made sure to, to let them know. She wasn't many, she didn't give too many chances because, I mean, if you didn't listen the first time, then she's not gonna just let anything keep happening on her time. Um, but yeah, I mean, she was there for 10 years. She operated the forklifts. Um, she did numerous other of other positions as well. I mean, she wasn't just the forklift operator, but wherever she, she needed the help, she'd go. That day, that day, honestly, is the worst day that I can on ever to ever happen. We heard about it around 10 um, from people reaching out to my sister-in-law who then reached out to me. Um, I have a direct number for her to call at the warehouse. And so we were hearing the stories of, of an accident. People were offering condolences. Uh, there was a media involved already at that point. So we're listed as emergency contacts. We weren't notified of anything. It took us calling. The first number I called didn't work. So I started looking for another number. And then I got a number for the warehouse that she was at. So I started calling until I was able to get through. And at that time, I advised them who I was, why I was calling, and I just needed verification. I just kept getting the runaround. So finally, I just kept pressing them, telling them again why I was calling. I just needed to confirm. I just wanna know, is my mom okay? I'm hearing stories. Can you at least just do that? I get transferred um, to someone else, and then at that time, they advised me that there is an investigation going on. Still at that time, I wasn't aware that it was my mom. And I'm asking again, is my mom at work? Just tell me that, that's all I need to know. Is she okay? And was told again, there's an investigation. I can't release the information and basically hung up. So I took it upon myself to notify my brother that, okay, we're not getting any, anywhere with this. So we, we decide, let's drive there. And by this time, it's almost 11. I get another phone call from the same number that I initially reached out to. And at that time, I'm advised that there was an accident there. My mom was involved. That my mom was no longer here. One, I'm, I'm in disbelief because I talked to her. I talked to her the day before. We planned to go to my niece's softball game that Friday. She was only working half a day and she was going with me to her game. She didn't get that chance. And at that time, once they're telling me, I'm asking them questions. What happened? Who's there? You know, why didn't I get called? Why are other people knowing that what happened before we notif were notified? If we're on the emergency contact, why didn't nobody call us? This incident happened at 6.30 and it took up until 11 o'clock only because I called for us to even be told something. And then at that, I'm being told one thing. I get off the phone and they call my sister-in-law who is also listed as her emergency contact. And she's being told a different thing from what I'm being told. So there's so many questions we have. What happened? We don't have answers. As much as we want answers, we're not getting them. As much as Walmart values their employees, that day, where was the value? Where was the humanity in it? What's the reason of them having emergency contacts? I'm confused, you know, at that time, because I'm like, that's weird. I talked to her the night before. I'm, my mom's okay, like, it's a sick joke. It's frustrating. It's frustrating and it hurts me. It hurts me because my mom's not here. So much, I have so many questions. 
And I wish I could give y'all answers. But I don't have them. I feel like, like I said, that day, that's my worst, <laughs> it's my worst day ever. It will forever be my worst day. Having to replay everything, still, still me knowing that I had to make the initial call. How much longer would it have been? How much longer would they have waited for me to even noti to notify us? How is it okay for other people to know what happened, her name, a company across the street know what happened in her name before us? We're her family. They're, they're not her family. So why are they contacted first? If this could have been prevented, I don't know. I know she followed the rules. I know she followed safety for this exact reason. But I don't, I don't know what happened. I, uh, everything is, everything is, is a different story. Still to this day, it's a different story. And that's the reason why we're here today. So you haven't heard from um, Walmart at all about anything that, that, that took place that day? No. No. I only heard from Walmart because I called. I called around 10.30, 11, they call back, and then they tell me. They don't care. To them, it's just another number. Someone they can just replace. We lost someone that we can't replace. They didn't. Well, we were warming up and my coach is like, uh, you have to go home, there's a family emergency. I'm like, what's going on, you know? Um, I looked at my phone, I had a bunch of calls from my parents, my siblings. What happened? I get home, turn the corner, there's a bunch of cars <laughs> in the street. <laughs> I just see my grandma's car. <laughs> Usually, if something happens, just right in the middle of it, you know, trying to figure out, trying to get out to people, reach out to people too. That's when I knew, like, something happened to my grandma. And I had been staying with her, so I'd just seen her the night before. You know, we just talked, said goodnight to each other, see you tomorrow. And, well, unfortunately, I didn't get to see her the next day. And whenever they told me what happened, I couldn't believe it. I was mad. I was mad that my grandma got taken from me. <laughs> that we found out the way we did because no, no family should go through that. No family should have to reach out to somebody to figure out what happened to their mom, their grandmother. It's, it's upsetting to know that what if something could have been prevented and if we would have called, called in a call earlier, everything would have probably changed, hopefully. But if it didn't, then just a call would have been appreciated. And how is it for, for you, you know, um, same thing, almost a month later and still hadn't heard anything? Um, it's frustrating too. Where I go to school that is in the area where she stays, so I sometimes have to pass by her house or go to her house. And it's, it's difficult sometimes because, you know, the memories, they just come. Having to drive, pass by her house, having to drive the way I have to go home the day that I found out, I have to go that same route. Sometimes the memories come back from that day, but I think that she would want us to be here to figure out what happened. She wouldn't want us to be quiet. Well, Easter's coming up and that's her favorite holiday. She'd always call us and tell us, hey, I have eggs saved. I need y'all to come color them. We gotta do the confetti. So the We'd always get together to get everything ready for Easter. And 
she always wanted us to get together, whether it was blocking the street off and having all the family there, or even if it was just a little intimate thing with just us, you know, with me and my brothers. You know. So <laughs> we decided that is her favorite holiday. We should still honor it. Um, you know, gather the way she would want us to gather. Have fun. And we have memories, so many memories, each of us. I have my own growing up. I hear my brother's stories of their memories. My kids, all her grandkids. And it's just still I, we keep her memory alive by just telling each other stories. What was it about Easter that she just loved? <laughs> Cracking eggs on people. <laughs> the excitement of trying, and, and you couldn't get her though. That was, that was hard to get her. Sometimes you have to catch her and she's not looking. No, I think that was what she enjoyed, and then just, just seeing everyone laughing. The kids going to look for eggs, especially trying to get the money that she would hide. I was making the day special. Yes, she made any day special. As far as me, for Walmart, why? Why so many different stories if it's nothing like y'all want to portray it to be? Why so long? Why emergency contacts if y'all don't need them? What happened? Is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, what happened and when can we get the truth? What's, what's this time been like for you all not having those, those answers? It's hard. For me, it's hard. Not knowing answers, still wondering, still replaying that day. I question myself what I could have done. Should I have called her and told her, hey, don't go in? Just, just call in sick. I shouldn't have to question myself of what I could have done to prevent it. But I find myself doing it. We're a big sport family. No matter what kind, <laughs> we're, we're a big sport family. Um, I grew up baseball, softball. My brothers have coached me. My mom's coached me. And it's just the fun in the games, the the thrill. She did. Yeah. Is there anything, Danielle, for you that sticks out that she would always tell you, um, whether it be with sports or just in life, just in general? Um, that everything will be all right. And does that hold true for you even now? I just have one more question uh, for both of you. How do you keep going? Because it's a traumatic experience, you know, the death of anyone. And to lose someone, that's difficult. But how do you find strength to keep going? And even to be here today, to sit with us, to do this interview, um, to seek answers. How do you keep going? What keeps you going? My family. The support I have from my family, the support that I have from from her coworkers, I lean I, I lean on my family. If I'm by myself, I don't. I think if I was by myself all the time, I I, I couldn't do it. It's hard. But I know my mom wouldn't want me to just sit there and do nothing. She would want me to do as much as I can, as much as we can, to find out what happened and to also just 
support one another. Um, knowing that she wouldn't stop and that she wouldn't want us to like dwell on it as much as like she, we would probably could, you know, think about it, you know. I took two weeks off of school, but I knew she would be like, why are you taking weeks off of school? Go back to school, go back to practice, go back to games, because she wouldn't want us to just sit around. And I think that that's why you know, we're going to keep going. And because she wouldn't want us, she would probably be mad right now that we're tearing up. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I didn't know her, but just based on what, you know, you all have told me and the, the person she was, um, and I know Easter's coming up and that's one way, you know, you, you keep her memory going, but even what you all here together now and what you're doing now, and that's, that's continuing her memory and her legacy too, so. Um, like again, I, I, like I said, I didn't know her, but I can I can tell she she lives on through each and every one of you. She does. Yeah. Is there anything that I might have missed that you want to add or you want people to know? Uh, my mom was huge on dancing. Um, she loved the Hano music. Picky. <laughs> Can't play just anyone. <laughs> but she. Anytime she she would put on some music, she'd hear some, or we'd be out, she'd sing along, or if we're at a party, she'd be the first one out there dancing. <laughs>